Hello everyone and welcome to the show. I'm Zoot. I'm joined by Knoxville who I'll be calling up right now and we are going to be getting our way into this DGL game between uh, Jind and Bravado Blue Gaming. What's up Knox? You've joined. Hey, what's up? Yeah, good to be here. Just uh, making sure all the settings are right. I don't want to have to have a remake especially given the long server finding time. Yeah, I mean, all the players are here this time around, so it's not going to be like the last game that we had earlier where we're going to have to have a reshuffle after the uh, draft has been complete, so we should be all good. And of course, during the introduction, I referred to J I referred to that other team as Jind. Yeah, okay, we'll call him Jind today just to make it uh, all good in the hood. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'll, I'll give it a crack. <laughs> Johan is needy Basni. No? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You got it. Yeah. Fluent all good. as ever. Yeah, that's, that is professional. Good. Okay, we're sorted. So, uh, speak to us a little bit. Uh, what do you think we can expect from this? You, you mentioned uh, some facts about uh, gender earlier. Tell us again. Yeah. Um, okay, so they they were in the first division, which is in the same way that like you have the British Premier League and then you have the first division. They're, the first division is actually the second division. It's the like the buffer level between the Premier League and the open division. And... They they won that and then they moved themselves into the playoffs to get promoted into Premier League, got promoted into Premier League, and at DGC I think they made top eight. Uh, I'm not 100. I mean they weren't tiebreakers or playoffs. Mm -hmm. what, um, what did Bravado Blue make at DGC? Were they present? So, uh, so Bravado. So a couple of the players here were at DGC. Disappoint okay. wasn't playing for Bravado. He was playing for. Um, a team called AS uh, sorry Rockat and they right. they came th fourth and uh, yeah Disorder is also known as Chosen One he was in the uh, the other Bravado team um, mm -hmm. which came second and Mikasa was Odu also in the Bravado team so those two players and now, and from there and Hives also played for Rockat so two Rockat players and two um, yeah two players from the uh, Bravado squad that mm -hmm. split. Okay. And uh, we're favoring the Bravado team on this one, but th to be honest, from the sounds of it, it could it could end up being a pretty even game. I think it's probably like... Compared to that, at least the one we saw earlier, you know? Yeah, it's like probably like 55 or 60% favoured towards the Bravado guys, but I mean, Johannes mm -hmm. Needy Boss have been practising a huge amount, and they're not... They're, this is like... Not, I mean, not no disrespect earlier, I just think that this is a closer game, going to be a closer game than... The one we saw earlier. Yeah, no. Well, they were s sat and waiting on the lobby, just, yep, we're ready, we're absolutely prepared, mentally and physically. And <laughs> they, they seem to be excited to get into this one, and we're going to be getting it into the draft, so immediately Bristleback removed. <laughs> yeah, it's just such an annoying hero to deal with. Let's just, let's just not even bother. Just c can't be bothered to deal with it. And uh, Jinder getting rid of uh, Bane here. Why would he get rid of this one uh, first? I think that it's a hero which just, first of all, Hives plays quite a lot of. It's a very, very powerful hero in mm -hmm. terms of control. And maybe it's just a hero that's good against something that we're going to see them pick up. Maybe Jinder going to go for a, a Lifestealer early on. I mean, Visage made it through the pool. I mean, that's an excellent try lane hero. Yeah. Maybe, we'll, maybe we will see that, that Nyx sneak its way through. And it's a very pesky hero to deal with. And one of the greatest counters to it is... Um, is that Ben? Instead, we're going to see the Venom and Symbol exactly the same. I'm having two a first flashback. Picks. Uh, yeah, same same two picks that we saw Energy go in the se second game earlier. Yeah, precisely. So, well, they're pretty popular heroes, so I I don't see why not at this point. We're going to have Nyx as a second pick for Bravado though, and so we we haven't really got any. I said you know Timbersaw, he's he he'll pick up quite a lot of farmers probably at th third position, but. Um, we're still waiting to see who are carrying who will mid with being. That's that's usually, in my opinion, the most exciting ones because they're they're the ones that are going to be the big playmakers. Yeah, getting the early items and making some damage all over the map. Mhm. Mm exactly. Well, there's so many to choose from. Do you think we see an invoker here? I mean, I really don't know what Jind is all about at this point. I don't know what their signature heroes are like. I mean, who who is their carry and mid player? DJ Vega was was their mid player. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. Their their lineup is actually I think seven people and they 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 have two or three subs I think Halbert is one of their subs according to their roster page yeah so I'm not sure like I'm not sure given subs how they're gonna 
mix it up. I, I'm pretty sure DJ Vega is going to solo mid though. He he is uh, quite a consistent solo mid player, and yeah, he, he had actually a, quite a good run. I think in the we had a one v one tournament with all the all the players in South Africa who were keen played. Nice. And uh, I think he did pretty well in that, as far as I can recall. I'd like to do a bit of one v one. That's kind of what I've been doing in a lot of Quake. Uh, I don't know how my skills will transfer at all in Dota, <laughs> but I, th I think it would be pretty awesome to do some 1v1. We're going to have a Luna here. Looks like a carry has been decided. Uh, Luna was really strong from what we saw in Infinity Gaming, at least up until the 25-30 minute mark. And what we're getting a Marana as well, which will turn out to be even stronger for Energy Gaming. Yeah. So I wonder if the story is going to repeat itself. Apart from their Luna own opposite sides. <laughs> Luna's just as much a pick there as it is a counter pick. It's one of Disappoint, who's the carry for Bravado's like signature mm -hmm. um, signature heroes. For Bravado, it's a lot more defined roles. Um, Mikasa Ooh. will solo mid, and Disappoint will support uh, will carry, and then Hives will definitely support, and probably Modest in the off lane and Disappoint. I mean, I mean, sorry, Disorder um, as a support, but I, I'm not sure how Modest actually exactly where Modest will play. I haven't watched enough of their scrims to be honest. Okay. Um, they, yeah, just. Uh... <laughs> I'm slightly worried though by what I see from Jin. I mean, okay, they've got a lot of slow, and they've got like a micro stun effectively from Luna, but Not they don't. CC, yeah. yeah, they don't really have a lot of ways they can hold uh, the enemies at the moment. So I think they really need a stunner of some sort as their last pick. Maybe even just go purge or something. I don't know. <laughs> but. Um, I, I think Bravado now, they, they, they can be fairly flexible. Do you think the Marana's... Actually, what position would Marana be playing in this? Because it still seems like a very open table for, for Bravado. Yeah, so look, Bravado plays with... Um, it was, was, a, was a player in the team, obviously the old Bravado team, like the, the way before it split. Mm -hmm. And Scant was the, the, the primary drafter in that team. And these heroes over here are very, very signature, like very Mikasa slash Scant type of heroes. All of them are like very very skill intensive heroes in many ways. Marana has a skill shot, Nyx now has a skill shot, but it's it's also about the positioning. Very very crucial for all of those heroes. Mm -hmm. Marana I think is po possibly a mid hero in this case, but From the looks as of it always, the yeah, as always it's like there's a lot of options on the table. I'm a little bit surprised by Ooh, the right. ancient apparition are. getting picked up, and I think that the, the logic behind it is not only is, was Alchemist kind of telegraphed as a as a pick here. But also, it does eliminate like life steal, you know, as as like a, a an archetype. So it means that things like Nyx and Alchemist, and even if you want to be crazy and go for Morphling, like those are just not very very good picks against the Ancient Apparition. That's it. I mean, if, if they make early picks on the Ancient they're Apparition, they're not they're not good picks against AA. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what can you explain? Uh... Okay, well, so Ancient Apparition's ultimate, which is called yep. Ice Blast, it, if it hits you, you can't gain life in any way. Mm -hmm. You, um, yeah, like, it's just, and as a result, Alchemist's, like, great power comes in Chemical Rage, which decreases his base attack time and gives him, like, somewhere between 50 and 100 HP regen per second, depending on uh, what level it is. So... That just completely nullifies that. I mean, obviously it's quite hard to you hit Ancient Apparition. You would have thought that Alchemist then wouldn't be a carry, it would be support. That That is also a possibility, but I mean, the Visage is definitely a support. Yeah, and, I mean, <laughs> let's see some and, AA, AA carry, please. <laughs> and uh, Nyx Assassin is most likely going to be in that offlane position, I would think. But I mean, there's a lot of, like, the three heroes picked first for Bravada Blue. Are like definitely, definitely there to like options to go aggressive trial lane, and to some extent they could go Visage, Nyx, and Alchemist, but that would be yeah. too melee. What? And uh, this is oh interesting pick, last pick, uh, Death Prophets. One of those heroes that just you know always been a fringe hero, always been a like tier two, tier tier two point five hero, but <laughs> I think that they've got a huge amount of push here. Like once Luna gets up drums. And get provided that Symbasaur has got enough levels from wherever he is, they're gonna have very very strong push, and it means that yeah, definitely. Like, like in the same way last game, last uh, series where we saw Ian wanting to say, okay, well we're gonna play, our uh, clinks. Yeah, clinks. We're gonna we're gonna want to get our Luna as much items, and we're gonna fight, you know, fight like real men. Mm -hmm. In this case, I think if Luna just gets up early, trades drums, maybe starts that BKB. They're going to be so strong around the like 12 to 15 minute mark. They're going to be able to take all the towers that they want, and that Death Prophet is going to be like 
their savior. They're going to have huge physical and magical damage from Luna and Death Prophet's ulti. And Venomance, obviously, huge physical damage as well on top of that. So it's like a, there's a huge like mid-game, like if this was a StarCraft analogy, there'd be a mid-game timing <laughs> that um, that Jind has just got like right there. And Bravado is going to have to extend that as much as possible. Yeah, and that that clinks pick uh, I find pretty interesting as well. I, I'm surely we're going to be seeing off lane yeah. clinks. Well, you, you were actually and explaining. Uh, someone was explaining to me how the the benefits of a uh, safe lane one. But I it'll guess be it depends safe lane where the tri lane is. Yeah, it'll be a safe lane clinks, and it'll be an aggressive tri lane with alchemist as a support, like you said. Okay. So so it's going to be solo mid Nyx assassin for bravado. Right on. And uh, interesting. Clink's Link one of my favorite heroes to play at the moment uh, when I'm pubbing it up, as usual. <laughs> so I, I'm going to be looking for some big moves by actually. Uh, who are we getting on the Clink's? I'll go through the, the teams. Uh, the Sword is going to be playing the Clink's. we got Alchemist by Hybes. And uh, Nyx will be played by Mekaisa, if I'm saying that right. Uh, Disappoint yeah. on the Mirana. And uh, up at the top here, we have got Visage played by Modos. And let's go to the other team. Uh, Ancient Hatton Apparition played by Sphere. Uh, Timbersaw is uh, played by Xenomath. Death Prophet by DJ Vega. Uh, up in mid, Venomancer by Mal. And we've got our Carry Luna here played by Hellbird, which is actually the stand in getting uh, some time yeah. on, the, on the Luna. Well, I mean, well, I, I think stand in reserve. Yeah, yeah. All, of their, uh, all of their reserves, I think, are very versatile players. Hellbird has played. Uh, off lane support. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was in a team with Halberd, and we we were the two support players. So I'm pretty sure that he will fit in right in here. Starting items are stock standard. I mean, like pretty. Uh, yeah. Like exactly. there hasn't been any mistakes made. I don't think by anyone so far. Like sometimes you see a small little thing early in the game, which just has a huge effect, and that cascades. But not really in this game at all. Mm -hmm. You see, there's been a little bit of regen pulled onto the clinks. He's got two tangos. Oh, missing his block. That's a, that is that that's the first uh -oh. mistake. See. Mikasa also didn't block, um, didn't do the Arteezy block as well as he would have liked. So, uh, but so did DJ Vega missing okay. missing his block. Oh, this is going to be nice to... then in, in that case for uh, the next. So that's a, that's that's brilliant. You just want to get your uh, your creeps up on the higher ground. But nice little moves here by DJ Vega to mess things around a little bit. And I, I'm definitely going to be looking at the Death Prophet to be making some plays, pushing hard in probably the next 10-15 yeah. minutes. What's really nice in this combination is that, I mean, obviously the mana burn is really nice, right. but furthermore, like, you're able to get spike carapace and you're able to dodge the nuke that comes in. Nice. Really, really is very, very effective. And we see that he took impale level 1 as opposed to mana burn, just so that he's able to, you know, hit a couple of creeps here and there, and as a result gets his, his bottle going as soon as possible. Yeah, really got to keep an eye on this tri lane as well. I'm not really sure where the action is going to start first because Mix really lost about half his health. Down bot, have we got anything here? It's pretty stagnant with the clinks yeah, this of the Timbersaw. Favorable lane. I mean, melee hero versus a Timbersaw is very bad, but the fact that it's a clink, specifically a clink that does so much physical damage. And this is also known as Chosen One. It's going to be uh, playing this hero with some great skill. What is to be noted in the top lane is that. Uh, this is a mistake, like, this is quite a huge mistake, really, is that Halberd took level 1 Lucent Beam as opposed to Lunar Blessing. I mean, it Isn't just means... to slow down the last hit possibilities? I mean, he seems to be hitting them at the moment. Let's go. It, the reason that you would take that is if you've got, like, a much worse tri lane and... Oh, <laughs> cheeky arrow. Oh, <laughs> yeah, if, you, if, you've got, if you've got a much worse tri lane and you want to be able to use it just to, like, farm a creep hero there at great range, in this case, I think that they've got a much better tri lane. They don't have stun, as you said, but if they don't stand very poorly for the Alchemist and they initiate on the Visage, they can they can definitely do some good damage here. Yeah, they're actually oh. a slightly aggressive stance. AA is going to have to be careful. Alchemist is going to be able to get a stun. We'll do a, a okay amount of damage, and there it is. The arrow following up. That's going to be first blood there. Touched That's off the by the Visage. If, if they don't make a move like this, then it really is just going to reach the point where I think they're going to just slowly lose the game. Well, lose the lane, lose the game. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is such an important lane. DJ Vega is only going to be able to come in and do some great justice in a, sh in a short while. Like once he hits level 7, 8. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's level 4 at the moment though. As long as it's not Halberd who's you know, getting killed over and over, he can kind of... I get they can't afford to lose the kills, but as long as Halberd's yeah. not the one suffering. 
then they can rebuild. Yeah, I mean, he's got a couple of nice creeps here under the tower in the last couple of seconds, back up to nine. And it's just DJ Vega who's, who's leading a charge. To be expected, I mean, Death Prophet. Yeah. High spammable spell. He's got a bottle up. Alright, Nick Nyx is getting his hands in there as well. Which is pretty decent. He's getting the balls. He's got himself a DD at the moment. Mm. He's got plenty to work with right now. I've got a push by a Disorder here on the Clinks. Just getting a little bit of damage on that tier one. Yeah, the, the nice change to Clinks' uh, Searing Arrows in recent times was that. It used to be magical damage, now it's physical damage, and so as a result, it's also castable on, uh, well, yeah, it's just... And that's a very interesting situation. How did mid get a kill? Wow, I can't believe I missed first blood there. That, no, what I was is happening? That, oh, sorry, man, my bad, but, uh, that's, that's pretty strange. I mean, double damage, sure, but Death Prophet should have been aware because he popped that DD quite a while ago. I think he must. May maybe he was busy buying something. I mean, he has boots now, so there was a possibility that he either lagged or just wasn't what he was <laughs> the, the no excuse acceptable yeah. uh, other than that. And that's not even acceptable. What am I on about? <laughs> so, and a little hiccup again by Jind. And they might start suffering a little bit because of this. I mean, it's not going to be too long until Nyx is going to start feeling comfortable to roaming. He's so close to level 6 right now. And I think top lane, well, e either top or bot are going to have to be very careful. Yeah, we also see Disappoint going for the Ring of Aquila, heading out towards him, and the Magic One. So they want to, like, that, that type of item choice probably mm -hmm. just wants to make another kill or two here. Mode is taking a lot of damage. And just standing on the side, what is also quite an interesting situation is just the fact that Nyx Assassin's got one of the highest base regens in the game 3.4 HP per second base. I mean, that's like means. So, so much in the solo lane situation. I've got more items. Who's picking up the item? Bring a quiller there on Marana. Yeah. And boot, no boots on the Marana yet. I think that maybe is a little bit of a mistake. And Modest just uh, doing a little bit of a grave chill there. That's just what's so annoying off. is that like once you get slowed, you have to move back. You have no other option other than to move back. So it means that like it just scares the entire enemy tri lane when you cast your little... <laughs> your little... Um, a little grave chill. But it's uh, very defensive that gender are kind of opting to be. They don't really have a super easy way to just, you know, focus. And they have to be provided. They've got some nice combos, as we saw uh, the Ancient Apparition being a, a victim of. I'm not sure how gender are going to be able to be such a presence, at least in the early game. Yeah, Timbersaw's actually come to the top lane now. He's level 6. And he does huge damage right now. Like, this is... There's going to be a lot of pressure on Hives here. He's channeling his stun. Uh oh Oh. Is the stun going to land on Alchemist? It actually is, but uh, Venomance is going to die, but Alchemist and Visage are going to go down. That was a very, very questionable play there by the two supports. Visage went on one hero, and uh, Alchemist went on the other. So they either they they just miscommunication, or what's more likely is they just try to get a bit greedy and go for two different targets to try to get, you know, optimize yeah. the amount of kills that they would make. Uh, they ended up getting, uh, well, only the one. Death Prophet there was down to about 5-10% health. So, uh, again, oh. Nyx is managing... Oh, actually, Nyx has got another DD. Uh, that will be why. Uh, what's, what's quite interesting is that you can see the warding over here is quite nice for Jin. So, the Ancient Apparition is just trying to tango through a little bit here so that he can harass to the far side. So... Mm -hmm. Quite a nice play over there, and I'm a little bit surprised that the supports have encountered here. They don't. They do have a sentry, so they they surely know that there's some action somewhere here. Yeah. Again, we've got that grave shiller scaring away. It looks like he's. It looks like um, Luna's going to be going for a quick bottle. A uh, bottle. I mean, um, drums. Yeah. And um, with, before even going for the boots, but I'm sure we'll be getting a uh, treads up on there or something. I mean, Luna has 330 base, move speed very, very fast, so it's a little bit of a... Sometimes it's it's a questionable decision, sometimes it's okay. I think in this case it's okay, given the fact that he's never ever going to be more than like... 700, 800 tiles away from his tower. i got to say, Klinx is getting some farm right now. Yeah, this, this sort of... They need to shut him down soon, he's going to have that Orchid up and running. Yeah, this, in the same way that... We're going to see the Death Prophet hit level 7, 8 and make some plays. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see exactly the same coming out of Clinks. As soon as he's got that Orchid up. I mean, he's got one Oblivion Staff. He's got enough gold for the second Quarter Staff. 
So he's a thousand two hundred gold away. He's gonna have it at like eleven, twelve minutes. Well, pretty much any hero gets in Clink's way, apart from Timbersaw or something. Then Clink's can just take him down with that orchid. Yeah, but that's the whole thing about the strategy here by Chin is that they just get these core items up and then they run around as five and they take a lot of towers mm -hmm. and then they have big team fights. And yeah, I mean, it's gonna be hard for Clink's to make pickles given that situation. We've got a rotation here from uh, Death Prophet. I actually got a lot of heroes um, from Jin up in the top lane. Clinks is going to be able to get a tier 1. Are they even going to be able to trade? Yeah, but Bravado is moving back here. Yeah. Right decision. And here we go. Drum plus Death Prophet ulti too strong. You meta. <laughs> Let's see if they're actually gonna, how much damage they'll be able to do to this tower. And then they, they just push them right away. We've got Clinks. He's just going further and further onto the bot lane. Actually, Bravado. And they're, they're trying to they're trying to push them all the way back here. Yeah, we could have seen Odu maybe be a little bit sneakier as he came in. And there's a ward right here that's like spotting on everything that's happening. They really should have countered that. Surely they know now that there's there's some sort of vision on the far side. Arrow coming forward. It's gonna hit Halberd. Halberd's oh, wow. in a lot of trouble. We've got a stun as well though, but they're splitting the targets once again. So Luna will be active again in just a moment, but we are surely gonna lose a hero. That disappoint is so weak, eventually gets taken down. And we did lose out on uh, Venno here. Oh my. Visage is getting a ton of kills right now. And uh, Jin seemed to be suffering in this first game of this best of three. Yeah, not, not the greatest of starts, but I think both teams have made enough mistakes. And what's really compounded is that was a 4v5 fight. Clinks is now probably finished up Orchids. I think it's flying out towards him. Yeah. Yeah, that's a so, really good time. So, when, so earlier when I said like 12 minutes? Yeah. 9 minutes 48. <laughs> That's pretty this good. I don't think he even went for boots or anything though, he just went yeah, yeah, yeah. direct. He doesn't, I mean, he's just gonna go around killing people now. Like, the supports have to stick together. The Ancient Apparition has got 600 HP, that's like... A couple of shots. Yeah. <laughs> if he's lucky. And Helber needs to get some boots now that the Orchids is up. Luna's still not level 6. Ten, 10 minutes in, we've got no Eclipse uh, that can be used. I'm actually, I'm actually pretty worried right now for them. They've been filtering their XP around some a hero that they really need to stack up a little bit. That's my also ooh, medallion up on Alchemist. So Rosh is now definitely an option for yeah. Bravado. And without the Eclipse, there's no way that we can see Jin fight in the Rosh pits. No, exactly. I, I think ooh. Luna just needs some quiet ooh. time. Can Gonna be some action mid, I think. This is gonna be really bad. We can see three people die here. At least we're gonna be one. There is Vendetta. We've got the stun as well. The double damage is gonna be helping out the Nexus. who's <laughs> been a very useful part in mid, but taking a lot of damage himself is gonna be able to make it out. He'll probably be inactive for the rest of the fight, but that's two heroes down for Jind. And Bravado Blue should be able to escape from this. Well, yeah, Xenomath is just... I think he needs to go back bottom and farm. The Klinx is just waiting to probably get treads up before he wants to join the fight. Because just given the fact that like there's so many like large skirmishes happening around the map, you know, 4v4, 5v5, 5v4, 3v3. He that, that's not really like the ideal pickings for a for a uh, Klinx. He wants it the scattered play, open play yeah. to make kills. So he's going to probably have to wait just a little bit of time. He's getting gold. He's happy. He's in a wonderful place right now. Yeah, but he'd make so much more gold just going around killing the air. And the air is the kind of hero that can actually hurt him. <laughs> He's going to be uh, sponsoring Clinks for this game. Oh, yeah, even, the, even the Timbersaw is actually like quite an easy kill, I think, for the Clinks. Oh, there oh, we are. Clinks having a go on the Death Prophet, doing some decent damage, but I don't think it's quite going to be enough. He, he messed up. He should have. He didn't Orchid there. He that didn't Orchid. Yeah, his orchid, he didn't cast Orchid, and it would have probably done enough damage, I think. Yeah, I thought that maybe, been... maybe not, maybe not. Do you think, I think Blink would be, should be something that Clinks goes for maybe after the treads. Seeing a yeah, little that's... Uh, EE going, uh, Eternal Envy, doing yeah, a yeah, that looks very classic. effective. Didn't we actually see that happen in the Bravada Energy Show match? Was there Clinks? Um, I'm going to have to look that one up, I'm, I'm not <laughs> sure, but I would not be surprised because it's a popular pit and Luna just getting taken out, I saw the end of that one, yeah. Marana must have landed an arrow on him. Yeah, it was a nice arrow as well. And uh, 
it's almost as if Jinder get kind of give well have been giving uh, Bravado a little bit too much respect through this game. I think I think yeah. they've been and this Clinks is cowering. just free. like they haven't done anything really to shut it down at all. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's going to be able to go and kill Xenomath here, maybe. No, no, no. He's, he's wise to the players. Let's look, see if, it, if he's going to be up to anything. He's hunting around. He might be able to catch up, uh, catch uh, someone out or flank them. There is a sentry ward there, but they wouldn't have seen him. Oh, AA, Inhibit Trouble doesn't want to go for it. He's going to go for the Death Prophet. Higher value target. Harry, right, this time he gets the silence off. Can he chase for the last hits? No, Same Death Prophet is too fast. And Venno, is he going to be able to make it away? Oh, nice scale. And then damage going off their blind hit on Mikasa. Do you have a sentry ward they might have just spotted him on the edge here? Hmm. If they had other vision, which I don't think they did. Vizard sentry is just standing in a tactful place here. Waiting <laughs> to pounce on anyone in mid. Death Prophet might be in trouble here. Here they are, the familiars. They're looking for a stun. Oh, they don't know. I don't think either of them hit. Maybe the second one. And, well, oh, there we go. That's a little stun at the end. Just a, a glimmer of wand health. Seal right. the deal. Yeah, precisely. This is uh, almost looking too easy once again for the Bravado blue team. I, I think I was expecting more. I, I, know, I haven't seen either of these teams play, but I was definitely expecting more from Jin. And I, I gotta say, I, I'm not a fan of their draft. I'm, I'm not a pro drafter by any means, but from in my in my eyes, I sure I can see some pushing potential. Yeah, but they've already I given away too much. Um, yeah, I think I'm very happy with their draft. I'm just not happy with the like opening bit of play. Mm -hmm. I think level one they have like much much better spells. Look, Visage, Visage's soul assumption is like incredible level one, mm -hmm. but so is Venomancer plus AA and. And they were all three ranged heroes. They would have all got plus plus fourteen damage. Someone's gonna die right here. Clinks. He's gonna be quickly taking down uh, the A. And now he's gonna have a go at the Venom Man. So two shots, taking Mal down to about thirty percent health. I see. Is he gonna go in for the final blast? Probably only needs one more arrow. Oh no, yeah. two will do the do the job. Yeah, this Clinks is out of control now. He's gonna get like MKB or something. And there's and there's also a, a courier that might get snapped off here. Uh oh, he's after the it. Sword yeah, they, they spotted it because of this nice ward here behind the tower. More free gold. There we go. <laughs> oh man, I, I don't feel good for Jin right now. Yeah, Hellbird also, like, you know, the, the no boots into BKB. Like, I think treads would just be a good decision right now. It means that he farms the jungle faster, means he does, like, a lot more damage in team fights. I mean, there's already a Dagon up here. There's a, Ogre Club's nice, but so are, so are power trends. And there's, there's a couple of fairly weak heroes. I mean, AA is not just a massive target for Clinks, but also for Nyx, for Venno as well, you could say. And actually Luna on top of that. Yeah, Luna's going to get scouted out here and just get... Oh, first stun misses. Here comes the Alchemist. Oh, there we are. Alchemist has got the stun. We've got uh, Venomancer over here. He's still level 4, so he can't set far out on ulti. There it is, Dagon. Goes down. Xenomath a little bit slow to get back up there. And Klinks just has so much damage. Oh! Mikasa nearly got taken out there. So much damage. Really but good. Oh. This. Klinks once again can't get the last shot. They might even actually get the kill on him. That's actually really valuable. Klinks maybe being a, a little bit too uh, ballsy. Yeah, Xenomath going to get about 700 gold for that. But I mean, what's that going to do for him? Not very much if he dies straight away. Well, he still made a net profit there. Pretty good. The uh, pretty good profit. But yeah, he's he's so far behind in his core items. Maybe it would be better for him to go go back and get that Vanguard and go into the um into the blade mail kind of build. I'm not a fan of that at all. But I have seen games that are going very very badly for it's in the soul. Yeah. I, I, Sometimes it, it could certainly work. And they, they might have to adapt to some of the plays that are being made against them. I don't know how you recover from this point in the match. I think that we need to see more grouping up by Jind, but I think the level advantage could be too much. Yeah, 15,000 gold over that. In fact, 15,000 experience. This is... I, I don't even know if turtling it and... I, no, no, I can't even, I can't even make anything up. <laughs> <from this. laughs> I'm not creative enough to do that. 
We might get another kill up here. Luna going to be in a lot of trouble. Are we going to be able to get the chase going? They've got a TP and Luna will survive. Barely. And we've got support for Gend. Coming up top. Have they got dust though? Or anything for this Clinks? Yeah, this Clinks is pretty much the king of the castle. His death there was mainly because he wanted a 3v1 under a tower. Like that's, that's like the only reason he died. He wasn't too far from getting it as well. <laughs> but I mean, I, sure it's a small error, but they shouldn't be uh, feeling any repercussions from that. Yeah, he's he's also well on his way to deadless, and once he's got that 5v1, look, no problem. Yeah. I'm thinking Luna. we have one more bad team fight for Jen, and it's going to be getting up to the racks while past the tier twos, at least. But this is what Jin needs to do: is they need to group up as five and take towers. They've done this once before, and they didn't get the tower. They lost lots of people. Mm -hmm. Those are doing damage. And the birds have to commit for this. Yeah. Well, meanwhile, the carry just gets killed in another lane. They need the carry to be part of the the team fights. I think. Wow. Oh, really wonderful bird stuns. Could actually do a lot of damage. Oh, they've got the stunners off on the Alk. Takes them extremely low, and they do eventually manage to get the uh, tower kill. And uh, Visage actually a lot of damage on him. Gets yeah. brought down. Hives is taking a lot of damage here. He's going to have a stun in a few seconds. He's channeling as well. I think the birds are don't have stone form for a while. They need to keep vision up. He's it's actually going to hurt himself by that. <laughs> oh, and we've got Nyx actually. He's roaming around. He's got himself at least a Dagon level two right now. Yep. And the sword could just go top and get lots of kills, I think. <laughs> He's trying to catch the courier, which is hiding quite nicely at the top here. I don't think you'll find it just yet. Mm, yeah, and uh, Mal's in a lot of trouble. Oh, he's giving himself away a little bit, but is he going to be able to go for a kill here? It's going to be Venno dropping quick as hell. And the stuns are going to come in as well. Oh my god, the amount of damage that he's doing. You can get his demon edge. He's not far away from having... Uh, that Daedalus at all. And we've got creeps pushing in up here. I didn't even notice that this tier 3 has gone down in the bottom lane. Yeah, I mean, that's just huge momentum that started like ages ago mm -hmm. and just built up and up and up. No, I, I, I really think it's just a matter of time until we're gonna we're gonna see the GG's called. I think Jin, it's almost better for them if they just get over this game as quick as possible and get themselves into the next one and just forget about this. We saw uh, Infinity doing this, they had an awful game one. Yeah. And then they, they seem to be really... It was no. worse than this. Their, their game one was worse than this, I think. Though. Yeah. Uh, no, I agree, but I... I think they had a strong mental game. And uh, hopefully Jim is going to be able to do the same kind of thing as uh, Infinity. I mean, I like the concept of the AA pick, but I think that you kind of air and Venno in this situation. Oh dear. <laughs> Going down again. Well, there's a lot of damage on Disorder. Stun's not going to be landing. He's moving too quickly for that. Death Prophet, though, he just put, stepped over the line a little bit too far, and he is going to pay for it. So many core heroes from Jind are uh, dying at the oh. moment. A little bit of a blender there by Mikasa. He stuns the ground. <laughs> he's, been, he's actually been very good with his stuns. I think he's missed one. He missed one very bad one middle, but I don't know. He's been pretty good. He's got a lot of money. He can go and get himself a Dagon level four if he wants. Yeah. And Desolate is up on the bottom. I think this is just like good idea. Don't worry about the Manta Soul. Get items that do damage and break buildings, and then win the game quick. Because from Bravado's perspective, they want to end this game really, really quickly. Make it a like solid thrashing. You know, 30 kills to six or something like that. And then move on to game two and feel confident. Yeah, definitely. They don't want to mess around and t like you know take it to game three or something like that. Oh, that ult ulti did a lot of damage there. Venno sitting on uh, zero to six. This uh, reminds me of the Jakiro that we yeah. saw in the in the game one last match. Oh, Jinda looking to engage here. Yeah, Rush. They're gonna go for it. They have the spells definitely to do it. Rosh is falling fairly quickly, but they might be able to get themselves in there. We've got a girl coming out. Timbersaw, he's going to be making a move. Here comes the Eclipse as well. Have they got enough damage to take any out anyone? They do actually kill the Alchemist and the Visage, but they've lost two themselves. And wow, actually Timbersaw making a great play. That's going to burn off the Aegis. And uh, <laughs> they will lose two at the top. I thought that uh, AA was going to be able to get a kill on Mikasa, but didn't happen in the end. So they got the rush and they made it a 4-4-2 fight. I mean, Jin 
we're happy that they got kills, but yeah. they lost. They lost everyone on their team except for the Alphamus. I mean, they, it's himself. Okay, and it was the two supports that also died, like, very importantly. It's none, none of the cause. A wall of Dagons has just appeared. <laughs> so Deadless is up now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's some really scary items. So he's, he's not going for the blink, but right now he's doing so much damage that he, he will only need to hit people a couple of times for them to fall. And what would he go next on Clinks? Because surely be blink. he can... He, I, I, yeah, I think he might sell his TP scroll or his one hand by a blink. I would. He's so far ahead. Yep, yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, this is it's just going to be easy kills. And right now, Jin are kind of forced to hang together, share the XP, share the gold. It, you see, if they were ahead right now and they were, they were together, this would be, you know, this would be good. Just easy pick off. Just oh. Too much damage there from him. Got any more action happening? No, these guys are falling back again. They're kind of forced to. There's a sentry over here. This is surely the yeah. next knows that his cover's been blown. He wants to try to take some. He wants to take damage to try to change. You know. Oh, look at the damage. Hobbits is going to pop. Ridiculous, and that's going to be Venom that's going to fall. Uh, Timber's so weak. He's going to have to go back. This is going to surely be uh, Rax. I don't know why they haven't called the, GG. Yeah, the, the li lane's been pushed back a little bit. No, I mean, it absolutely is game over right now. Yeah. That's it. They're going to call it right now. And we're going to be able to push over to a game number two here between Jind and Bravado Blue. Yeah, I think that was a very methodic uh, set of picks by Bravado. No, like, reliance on any, you know, like, good play. It was all just, you know, all the lanes were independent. Things happened to have a good lane, and that just cascaded into the other lanes. Whereas Jind, I think they required at least two of their lanes to win. And that was just like a big problem. Yeah. Oh man, so much money uh, and XP here for the Clinks. The Nyx as well, though, not a single death. Uh, involved in 18 kills there. I think I think the Nyx was great. As soon as he had for his uh, first kill in mid, and I was like, right, well, okay, I can get my quicker uh, <laughs> mana boots. Let's go get some kills. Yeah, I think the AA Venalanza pick just didn't, you know, didn't really work out together very no. well. No, I mean, Luna, Venno, eh, well, to, to be honest, it, the whole team really had a uh, an awful game going. In mid, you never want...